Hey guys, welcome back to the channel review anything and everything. And today we're getting into a review of obviously this is a dinosaur, a review of a figure that I wanted to review for a while. I actually had it for a while, but it was in storage and I wasn't able to get to it yet for a review for a little while now. So I'm happy to be able to review this figure. This is from the Jurassic World line of dinosaurs, Jurassic World Legacy Collection, um, which I may have mentioned before in a past video that their Legacy Collection is somewhere in between their Hammond Collection, which was almost like their professional artistic line and their basic line. The Legacy Collection is kind of almost like, I want to say, I feel like it pays more tribute to the older um, movies like Jurassic Park 1, 2, and maybe 3 as opposed to the Jurassic World line, even though it's under the moniker of Jurassic World. And this figure right here is actually from the Jurassic World, Jurassic Park 2 movie, The Lost World. This dinosaur is known as Mementosaurus. Now, <clears throat> now I wish I could have captured this completely on screen easy without having to take up all this room you guys see all this extra stuff going on in the background but unfortunately this figure is way too big to just fit into a small kind of boxed view but that's also kind of the beauty of this figure because it is really big and i previously reviewed on the channel the hammock collection um brachiosaurus as my first really large or sauropod type of figure and, you know, we're in a new age when it comes to dinosaur figures where in the past, anyone was familiar, you never got dinosaurs that were that big. Even in the very coveted and prestigious line, if you remember way back in the days, if you were from those times, the Dino Riders collection, even the long neck, which was they had the, the Plotticus and later on they made a Brontosaurus or a Potosaurus. Um... They weren't even that big. The T-Rex was probably bigger than the sauropods. So finally, we reached a point in time where the sauropods are humongous and they're actually lifelike scale to the three and three quarter inch figures. And to me, I'm all about scale, which I mentioned in past videos. And I will end up doing the measurements on this and doing the scale conversion, as I always do in all of my videos. But as the box says, this figure is 49 inches long. Let me see if I can squeeze the box in without having to remove the figure in the background. So, really guys, we can see the entire box. It looks like we can. So, here you see the box art on it. It's depicting the, I'm sorry for the lighting. My lights are shining a little bit of bright glare on the side. This is depicting the scene in Jurassic World, Jurassic Park The Lost World, where the Mementosaurus, and what's funny is at that time, I didn't know what dinosaur that was. I just knew it was a long neck sauropod, not knowing what dinosaur it was at the time. <clears throat> and I don't know if there was anything that indicated it, but when I seen that movie so many years ago, the very first time, I didn't know to find out or how to find it, if they even mentioned it in the movie, what dinosaur that was. But this is depicting that scene where <clears throat> the I think it's engine is coming out onto the open field and they're trying to capture a couple of dinosaurs and they're riding around on the dirt and their uh, motorcycles in their jeeps and everything of that sort and obviously one of the famous scenes of that scene is where the guy on the motorcycle drives through the legs of the mementosaurus and you know everyone gets excited and whatnot now I think the box art looks nice and a lot with a lot of these sauropod figures, I feel, I don't know if you can see this, cause like I said, I don't want to have to move the figure if I don't have to, but you can see the angle there as it continues the tail, the wrap around from that image there. And on this side here, if you can kind of see, it's the ways that you can articulate the dinosaur, but we're gonna go into that um in actuality in real time in terms of just showing you like the points of articulation here i know there's a side view so i know it kind of sucks but like i said i don't want to have to move the dinosaur out of the way i could do that but i really just kind of get into things so this shows more 
of a vertical, um, though I'm showing it sideways, this is a vertical image of the dinosaur um, on the box, but the same image as you had on the front. So we're gonna get the box out of the way at this point and jump into the figure. So before I dive into the details of the figure, because like I said, I don't really want to start moving him until I really get a chance to kind of really, you know, we get to that stage because I know that it's a lot to move this figure because he takes up so much of the screen. I want to get into a couple of fun facts. So first, I actually, well, one, you can actually find it as far as a place that you could find this dinosaur on exhibit. And it's funny because I've seen this exhibit before, but I didn't notice until coming back to it a couple of years later, which dinosaur that was. You can find Mementosaurus at the in New York at the Natural History Museum in New York. And uh, it actually has a full size one on display in a room just for itself, which I think is their um, largest specimen of a sauropod long neck dinosaur in that museum. Um, and so it's interesting because, you know, you would think that uh, this would be a very known dinosaur uh, because back in the days i would say you know say <clears throat> from the 80s 90s 2000s your really primary sauropods were i would say in the 80s it was really brontosaurus which later on you could just say is a potosaurus same difference even though there's some slight differences i think they tried to divide them into two separate ones on in current times but we'll just say that they're the same dinosaur so you pretty much had Brontosaurus, which was a Potosaurus. And you did have a little bit of the, uh, the Plodocus showing up here and there from a few things. Like I said, back in the days of the Dino Riders, that was the first and initial long neck, that they, that they, long neck that they chose to use. And so there were some things on it. But for the most part, a Potosaurus was the most famous um, at the time being known as Brontosaurus. And then... Later on, though, I got very familiar with Brachiosaurus being one of my favorites from a dinosaur book subscription I used to get years back when I was younger. Um, for the most part, and that was before Jurassic Park 1, Jurassic Park really kind of made Brachiosaurus very famous, being that that was the long neck they, choose, they chose to put as the dominating sauropod in the movie and the first dinosaur you see, making the Brachiosaurus now become the most popular long neck of all the long necks, but nonetheless, between certain shows like Walking with Dinosaurs and whatnot that came a little bit later and whatever the case is, for the most part, you had Apatosaurus, the Plodocus, who got, who was also in, um, like I said, Walking with Dinosaurs got very popular in that. And then you had um, Brachiosaurus, of course. So between those three being the most popular sauropods, you didn't really know that much about any of the other sauropods. and. What's interesting is that eventually they came out with a couple of super giant ones that they didn't have a lot of information on. So you kind of suspected but it was always that Brachiosaurus was the biggest sauropod. And then they started coming out with these other sauropods that were said to possibly be bigger, but it's because their skeletons seem incomplete or the media didn't really cover them that much. You weren't really sure if those numbers, those estimates were just over exaggerated or if they're real. So a lot of times, at least in my opinion, a lot of us fell back to the idea of the ones we knew, you know, Brachiosaurus being the biggest and having a more odd shape where he stands a taller. Um, you know, the Plodocus being the longest. Um, especially he has the longest tail, even though he wasn't very bulky. Um, and then obviously a pot of uh, a potosaurus being just like the middle ground, kind of more bulkier than the Plodocus, but you know, uh, not as long as the Plodocus, but yet being a little bit smaller than Brachiosaurus. And so all these really super giant ones, we just really didn't know about like that in terms of concrete, started hearing things about the Argentinosaurus and whatnot, but it was like, is this 100%? There's no full set of um, bones, at least that that's what it was seen to be depicted. So, and I'm sorry that I'm rambling. Obviously, I love dinosaurs. So, this is a dinosaur after doing some research on it some more i feel is it still also falls into that range of being a little not concrete in terms of its size and its measurement i don't know if to say it's one of those super sized dinosaurs that surpass even brachiosaurus similar to the way argentinosaurus is and 
I think there's one called Ultrasaurus, if I'm not mistaken, and um, other various Titanosaurus. Um, Seismosaurus was one of them that was an ultra big one um, that was, I don't think, fully fleshed out or put together, but it's just they had size estimates. I don't know if Mementosaurus falls into that category where he's bigger than Brachiosaurus, and let's assume Brachiosaurus is the bench mark for the biggest um, sauropod. I don't know if he supersedes that line or if he's below it. Um, because I see some mixed data that makes him seem like he falls within the lower range of that where he's very long, but not super massive. And then some things that put him seem to depict him into that range of the super massive type where you are not standing upright like a Brachiosaurus type design, but yet you are still like five times bigger than an Apatosaurus. So with that being said, I've seen some range in his um, measurements depicting from <clears throat> on the short end about um, high 80s, like 85 uh, feet long, and then the very long estimates of being like about 115, 120 feet long. Now, just to give some context, Brachiosaurus, generally speaking, is 40 feet high and about somewhere about 40 feet, maybe give or take a couple of feet taller, but about 40 feet high and about 75 to almost 80 feet long. Um, the Platicus, which is supposed to be the longest, or at least <clears throat> the longest of the ones that are fully known and fully discovered, its range, I believe, goes into the like 110 to 120 range in terms of length. It's about like maybe 20 feet high. <clears throat> and it's built very light and it's said to have the longest tail. Now, as I already gave you a little bit of the length on Mementosaurus, its height, I think, for the most part, is maybe a little bit bigger than Diplodocus, but not really up to the height of <clears throat> Brachiosaurus at 40 feet. And part of that is because of the design of its neck. Now, even though this one can move its neck like this, I don't think that. Um, Sorry, let me just make sense of that real quick. I don't think that that is its natural state. And so with that, I've seen review videos where people, sorry, the neck on mine is very stiff. I've seen review videos where people, okay, I just want to get him back in frame. So let me just adjust this a little bit so we've got his head in frame. I've seen people review and say, well, okay, he can be as tall as Brachiosaurus and because of the neck movement and whatnot. But I think one thing to really kind of note here is that I don't think naturally he's supposed to do that just based on obviously you can see his body design have taller at the back end of the hips and then by the uh, front shoulder areas comes lower. It's then not correct for his neck to be going up that way because it would put a strain on his neck to do that, which is why Brachiosaurus is built the way he's built with high shoulders and a lower hip. So with that being said, the length of the more longer sauropods might make them seem very huge in their length aspect, but they're not meant to have their necks go up high. So sometimes when people depict that, oh, he's you know bigger than the Brachiosaurus, um, I just want that to be of note. The toy gives you the artic articulation like that, but technically, I don't think he would be meant in design to bring his neck up that high, which is why Brachiosaurus is built the way it's built for a reason. So it's still going to remain a taller dinosaur in that regards, um, you know, regardless of whether it's considered to have a bigger body or not. <clears throat> now, they did make this one's body very hefty and very big. But what's actually interesting, if you look at a lot of the photos online in places like Wikipedia and whatnot, you will see that it's it says that it's supposed to have about half of its body length is its neck. I feel this figure is more generally proportionalized where the neck is about equal length to the tail, which you could see here, the way I have it fully displayed out. The tail is a little bit curved, but nonetheless, I think you could kind of see it enough to know that it looks like it's even on both ends. And if anything, I would say the neck, it, I mean, the tail is a little bit longer, which on most general sauropods, the tail is a little bit longer than the neck, whereas in Diplodocus, it's supposed to have the longest tail. 
Mementosaurus is supposed to have the longest neck. Now, when you, like I said, you look at images of it online, like Wikipedia and whatnot, the neck presence looks more like Dreadnoughtosaurus, which is funny because they do have a figure of Dreadnoughtosaurus. But the thing about it is this one hasn't been depicted in that way. So I love the way this one looks, but it may not be accurate to the studies. But obviously, Jurassic Park makes their dinosaurs in their own likeness that they choose to make their dinosaurs. So with that being said, I know I rambled on for a very long time. We're going to start really getting into the figure now. So one thing I want to mention is I like the size of the front feet. They look reasonable and a proportion that I feel makes sense. We'll zoom in a little bit here. But the rear feet, now I can't speak to accuracy, so I don't know if they're supposed to be that big or not. But you can see here comparing to Owen that they are twice as big as the front feet. And the only issue I would say that I have with that is the fact that the Brachiosaurus figure, and let me pause for a moment, okay, where I planned on doing a minor comparison anyway, but here I just want to bring this in just for sake. Brachiosaurus's feet, the front and the back are relatively the same size. Now, granted, that would probably make sense because the way Brachiosaurus is, he's not going to necessarily have, he would have more weight in his front area than he would the rear, but he's probably a little bit more overall balanced in the way like he would have to carry himself. Maybe, I'm not really too sure, uh, versus the other ones with the really big hips because I don't know, but his feet are balanced. They're both the same size on both ends. Whereas, um, uh, I'm just putting heavy Brachiosaurus down. Mementosaurus, I don't know if that's realistic in its proportions, but I feel like most sauropods, their feet just wouldn't be, they'd probably be the same on both ends. I would feel like they're large enough to where it would support it. And obviously, you know, there's always been that trend with sometimes with Jurassic Park figures where sometimes the feet are too big. So I can't really speak to say if that's true or not here, but I just want to point that out because it's definitely bigger than Brachiosaurus's feet. And like I said, if this is one of those dinosaurs that do fall in that ultra size category that's even bigger than Brachiosaurus, then I guess it could make sense. But if it's very, you know, uncertain with its estimates, then, you know, you're not really too sure where it falls into. Now, I will say this, the previous legacy collection, um, sauropods, were not to the same level as the one Hammond Collection sauropod, which is the Brachiosaurus that you just saw in terms of certain levels of detail and whatnot. But I feel this legacy one has taken some aspects from the, um, the Hammond Collection. And what I mean by that is, so you have a point here where you have side to side, you have articulation there. Obviously, you have that base for the neck, which all of them will have. The details, I think, looks extra nice. But you also, for the tail here, you can... Okay, this doesn't spin on that part here. It looks like it does, but it doesn't. But you do have the rubbery at the end, at the tip of it to bend on that portion here. So it doesn't move here, but it gives that rubbery. So I guess for me testing out here, I would tell you guys, don't got to push it too much you don't want to bend it. It looks like it should move, but I don't want to press too hard and then and break it. But it definitely is rubbery here. You have the ball joint here. Um, but then also the aspect of it that I feel kind of comes into play of, um, let me see if I can angle this a little bit better for you guys to see this. Okay, if you could see the head. So the head here, matter of fact, let me, here we go. Hopefully that helps. So <clears throat> the head here, I, if I'm not mistaken, the Dronotosaurus doesn't have the ball hinge in his neck. And I don't know if the Apatosaurus had it either, but this one has the little ball hinge, which really gives it. Um, you know, another level of articulation that you can move around. You know, I don't want to get super loose, but uh, it definitely is very good in that aspect. In addition to it, unlike the Apatosaurus, this one doesn't have just this flat lower set for the mouth. It's very, um, it, 
the Apatosaurus's mouth, the lower jaw is just flat. It, it doesn't even look right. This one looks like it's proportionate to the Mementosaurus. So they do a really good job on the head. I'm going to try to get a little closer. So don't mind. I'm hand holding this, but um, they really did a good job. The eyes look really good. Now, obviously, they don't have glass eyes, but they still did a great job with the paint. You can see the mouth looks really good. And um, yeah, it's just it's just has some really nice detail. And while I have the camera off the stand, let me just run through some things on it real quick. Scan code, which I'm sure you guys have already long gotten to the point of, of seeing one of those. But I just feel like it's, I'm not going to say it's exactly at Hammond Collection level, but it, it feels like a nice blend between being almost Hammond Collection like in detail and the regular regular legacy line in detail. Like it really feels that it um, is approaching that level of. Um, detail in my opinion in terms of certain aspects about it. like i said the ball joint the correct um uh, for the head the proportions for the head so what i'm going to do now give me one second i am pulling out my tape measure and we're going to measure now how big this is now like i said before the height i think would come above 20 feet generally speaking or roughly about that but as far as the length um, they gave a wide spectrum on when I did the research on Wikipedia. So that could be, I would say, generally speaking, if we're going to compare it to, say, the, um, the Plotticus, we're going to say at least maybe like 110 we're, we're probably looking at. So let me try to measure him out because I know that he's a little, um, I'm a little off here with this because of, the angle that I'm at. Let me see. How this? Get that on the scale. The length on the where the head is, and it looks like the head comes, yeah, right at 49. So just like the box says, I just want to confirm that's what it says. It's 49. Let's do the conversion. So I'm coming up with the equivalent conversion of 78.4 feet, which is, like I mentioned before, on the lower end of the estimates they gave. They gave them from being about 85 on the shorter end and then on the longer end, um, 110. But mind you, with the bend in its tail, I can honestly tell you, you could easily squeeze out if it was straightened. Probably another, I would say, we'll say... I would say five inches, but I think that might be a little too long. So we'll say three inches. So we'll go and put his measurement at 52 times the conversion divided by the feet equals 83. So I would say you can get an 83 out of that. And obviously, if his neck went fully even longer, you could squeeze out maybe a couple more inches out of that too. So roughly, you could say that if he wasn't in this more poseable design, um, where his uh, his neck and his tail is bent, you could easily squeeze him out to probably be something a little close to like 90 feet. So I would say he then definitely falls within that range of, com you know, accurate in terms of that. Now, let's see his height. Now, like I said, I didn't see a correct height measurement. It just showed a sculpting, but like one of those kind of um, silhouettes. But we got his hip at 12 inches. And then let's look at his head at this kind of normal, comfortable position is 16 and a half. So we'll measure both just to get an idea. So at the hips, he has 19.2. So like I said, around the Diplodocus is size of about 20 feet. And then if you're going off of where his general neck height will be without extending it unreasonably high, you're looking at 16.5 inches, we said. Twenty six point four feet. So that sounds pretty reasonable next to our Owen, which we put him at six feet just as a standard for all three point 
three quarter inch figures. And it definitely fits within reason of scale. Um, and obviously by me having him next to him, you can tell that a figure can easily go through between the dinosaur's legs, like in the movie, if he was on a motorcycle and that wouldn't be a problem. Um, so that's really about it. Um, I know that I went on a lot and rambled about the statistics of the dinosaurs, but to be honest, if you guys are a fan like I am with dinosaurs, then you really get into the fact of not just that it's a figure for play and this and that, but it's a display piece or even just the fact that you love dinosaur facts and you like the whole things being to scale. So I love that Jurassic, the Jurassic Park line, Jurassic Park, Jurassic World line is keeping things within scale to each other. And just going to, before I close out the video, throw this other big boy back on there. You check that out so you could see here. That is the look of these two. Dinosaurs, the tip of his head. And that is generally speaking the look of these two next to each other. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, angle bracket source a little different so you can see his body a little bit better too. Um, Brachiosaurus, the way he stands would be considered taller. Um, I have his tail kind of curved upwards right now, but generally speaking, we taller his body design, though it looks very nice um, for the size of Brachiosaurus. Once you start getting to these really, really heavyweight, large sauropods that are more lengthy, but still huge and chunky, their body tends to be to rival the size of the Brachiosaurus. And what's funny is the weight that if I'm not mistaken, I remember seeing for a Brachiosaurus, I want to say some of the higher estimates they said was about 40 something tons, I think somewhere I know it was above the, um, <clears throat> somewhere in like maybe the high thirties to low 40 tons range. And they actually said that some of the estimates they had for, um, a Megasaurus on the lower end was in the, I think it was the high twenties, but in the upper ends was also going into that 40 or 50 ton range. So. Um, like I said, they're a little all over the place with their measurements, which is why our most famous ones of Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, and Diplodocus were always a mainstay because their estimates were usually pretty solid and they didn't fluctuate as much where some of these other newer ones kind of fluctuate. So we don't really know how to take it. But generally speaking, if you looked at it on the high end, then it would be a comparable size to Brachiosaurus, which just feels like that's where they went with this figure, where he's not necessarily bigger, but he's not necessarily that much smaller either like the way a Potosaurus or Diplodocus would be versus a Brachiosaurus. So just keeping that in mind and seeing that little comparison and difference, Brachiosaurus definitely has a way huger head, um, which tells me that Mementosaurus' head in general is tiny because though it is obviously a pretty big chunk of Owen, bigger than like say about equal to his chest or a little bigger, Brachiosaurus' head is probably three quarters of Owen's body. So very big, not T-Rex big, but very big. Um, so yeah. With that being said, you guys like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, and as always, um, I'll catch you guys in the next video.